I took part in a blender battle against the legendary Infensia and my node master friend Stephen Woods. We had one hour and the challenge was to create a beast. Now Infensia is known for his super fast modeling, so I needed to really go big and attempted to create a fully rigged game character in only 60 minutes. This is a detailed breakdown of what I did in that hour. If you want to see the full battle, click the link in the description. So my plan was to create a Leshen beast from the Witcher series and I started with my usual technique of blobbing out as I call it. So that's using these subdivided blobs to create the basic shape. To create the blobs it's very simple, I'm just using a cube, and yes I did use the default cube, and I press Ctrl 2 to add a subdivision surface modifier to it. I can then go into edit mode and change the shape really easily, and just keep duplicating the objects and placing them into position where I see fit. I work on just one side of the object, so I'm going to mirror it to the other side later on, and I'm regularly jumping from front view to side view to make sure it's not completely flat from one side. That's a common beginner mistake, is just modeling from something like front view. And the human form is actually quite curvy, really. When it comes to detailed things, like the hands in this case, or these funny claws, I keep to the same process. I just do one of the fingers and then I'll duplicate it across for the other ones. Again, of course, I'm only doing this on one side. What I am making sure of with all the objects is that they overlap slightly because I'll be joining them together with a remesh. You will see me taking a fair bit of time doing this process. It's important to get the shape right to start off with before you start going into any sculpting. It's so much easier to sculpt if the base structure and the shape is correct. The next stage is joining objects together. Before I do this, I apply the objects rotation and scale. Then I select the objects I want to join and press Ctrl J. I still keep them in sets, so I have the torso, the arm, the leg, and the hands all separate, and then I'll join them all together later on once I've done the sculpting. To sculpt on these new objects, I do need to do a remesh, but I keep the voxel count quite high, so it's not too detailed. It's important to build up the details slowly, and because I didn't have much time, I didn't really go that detailed. So when it comes to the hand, I take this one claw, obviously join together and start sculpting it, then once it's sculpted, that's when I'll duplicate it for the other ones. I'll take a little bit of time making sure they're in the good position. And when they're ready, then I'll start sculpting the hand into position. And once the hand is sculpted, then I can join them all together. I do take a moment to kind of make the claws at the end more claw-like. And then I come back to it later to join it. Similar process for the leg. And actually, I've kept the foot separate as well in this case. So I'll come back to that later on. I hadn't put a neck in for the torso so I can just stretch out the shape. You can put a blob in for the neck as well if you want to. Sometimes for detailed objects like the head or the hands in fact, I go a little bit more detailed with the first remesh. So you can see this is a little bit more detailed. The voxels are that little bit smaller than the rest of the mesh. In terms of the brushes I'm using, I generally stick to the grab brush, but I am using the snake hook tool to bring out the horns. And every time I kind of stretch the mesh, then I just quickly do a remesh to add new faces and topology into that section. I also sometimes use the inflate brush. If the points of the horns get too thin, then you can just inflate them out. The head was certainly an area where I would have wanted to spend a lot more time really. And I would say it's the weakest part of the model. I felt like it needed a bottom part to the jaw. So I added in a UV sphere and just started sculpting that around. It then gives me an option to have a mouth open and maybe add a bit more scariness to the model. But again, I wasn't particularly comfortable with how it ended up and that's where I would have spent more time. For the feet, I wanted to make them look a little bit like tree trunks, so I just started pulling out these kind of root structures. Generally, I'm just trying to get the basic shape because it's going to be a silhouette and that's the most important aspect, this kind of silhouette and the shape of it rather than the fine details. But at the moment, it looks very clean and kind of crisp. So to break up the shape, I thought I'd pull out these distorted branchy bits in the hope that that would make it look more gruesome and scary. Because I was rushing, I kept the symmetry on, which I think doesn't quite work. I would have rather had some asymmetry here for these different spikes and things. For this kind of secondary pass of detail, I've upped the resolution so I can get more spikes and detail in there. When adding detail to the hand, you need your fingers a little bit apart so that when you do a remesh, they don't kind of join together. And you need enough detail in your remesh to make sure you can keep the detail of the fingers. I felt like the shape was coming together fairly well here. It still looks a little bit blobby, but this is probably as far as I can go without taking too much time. 
With all this extra detail, I kind of cheat here because I'm using the quad remesher, which is a paid for add-on, costs about $80, I think. But what it does well, it reduces the face count, but at the same time, keeping the structure and the shape. Of course, the ideal would be to retopologize properly, but that wasn't possible with the time constraints. This is also where I start joining objects together, like the feet and the leg and the hands and the arm. Now the ideal optimal game character would have this high detail baked onto a low poly mesh. However, I haven't gone particularly high detail, so I kind of kept it as it was. I could have remeshed all the objects, lowering the face count and then bake the detail from the high poly to the low poly. But my high poly here isn't actually that high, so I can get away with it and it's just about in the boundaries for a game character, should we say. So in the end, I didn't actually bother doing the quad remesh for all the objects. So I mirror the arms and the legs across the other side and it's kind of looking like a character now. And I've added in a floor and I'm going to do some experimentation with lighting and materials. At this point, I didn't have long left, so I had only about 15 minutes to put something together as some sort of scene. I did feel it needed that because it's not an amazing model and lighting can make a huge difference to how good it looks. And I wanted to go for this dramatic backlight so you can kind of see the silhouette and it looks pretty creepy. I then wasted my time trying to put trees in the background and all this sort of thing, which really wasn't necessary. I sculpted one, added a basic bark material onto it and then duplicated it and rotated it several times. Then started to panic with only about 10 minutes left to do some rigging. I used the basic human rigify rig. It doesn't have fingers, so it's a bit quicker to rig. Being able to move those fingery claws would have been really nice. I started to get really panicky here, so quickly added some eyeballs with a red emission to kind of make sure I had a finished product before going on to try and rig it and pose it. The Rigify rig gives you this basic armature that you place into position, and then you press this special button, which turns it into a really complex rig. That gives it basic IK, and you can kind of pose it much more easily. You can see me attaching my mesh to this rig, and now I'm putting it into some sort of scary position. Now, normally in this process, you'd do some weight painting, but I was in a rush, so it's a little bit out, and you can see that the fingers are kind of slightly attached to the leg bones, but I got away with it in the end, I think. So here's the finished result, although I did cheat a bit here, I added a few minutes adding some fog and I tinkered a little bit with the log positions and things like that and of course added a camera. I'm quite pleased with how it turned out, I think it was quite successful for only an hour. Let me know what you think in the comments below and do take a look at the link in the description to see the actual battle and how it went.